Wonderful. Hi, everybody. My name is Larry Eames. My pronouns are he, him, his. And welcome to the HELP, I'm an Accidental Government Information Librarian webinar series, or as we say, HELP for short. This series is brought to you by the American Library Association Government Documents Roundtable, and thank you so much for joining us. You will be muted during the webinar, but we encourage you to participate in the chat, which I'll be keeping an eye on. If you don't see the chat window, you can click on the chat icon along the bottom of your screen. We also encourage you to add, add questions via the Q&A function throughout today's session. We'll say them for question time at the end, but we encourage you to submit them as you think of them. And there will be some opportunities for presenter audience interaction during today's webinar. So be sure to have chat open. If there are technical issues, Kelly Wilson is on hand to help. Feel free to chat her. And worst case scenario, please remember that this webinar is being recorded. Be sure to stay tuned for our slate of spring webinars. Those are coming up. In December, we have a webinar on the new uh, National Institutes for Health data sharing policy, and we are recruiting for our spring and May session. Stay tuned for more info on what's going to be happening in May, March and April. Um, there will also be a short survey at the end where you can share your thoughts on today's webinar. And I'm just going to drop my email in the chat. Um, for anyone who would like to email me with any of those ideas. You can see more of our webinars on our YouTube channel, and please give us a follow if you are a YouTube user. So without further ado, today's webinar is Government Resources for Entrepreneurs Using Florida as a Case Study. In this webinar, you'll learn about the interconnected nature of government information in an entrepreneurship context. Using one of the most populous and diverse states in the nation as an example, we will follow how entrepreneurs frequently interact with a wide range of federal, state, and local agencies as they start and grow their businesses. You'll take away some of the major types of entrepreneurship-related agencies, what their roles are, and where to find them in your state. Our presenter today is Blake Robinson. Blake is the business librarian and an assistant professor at Rollins College in Winter Park, Florida. He works primarily with students, faculty, and staff in business, economics, and health, for whom he provides research assistance, information literacy instruction, collection development, and other services. Blake holds his MS in Library and Information Science from Florida State University in Tallahassee, and an MA in Arabic and Islamic Studies from the University of Sydney, Australia, and a BBA in Marketing from the University of Texas at Austin. I am going to go ahead and stop my screen share and turn things over to Blake. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Blake Robinson, and thank you so much for that introduction. So uh, I am the business librarian at Rollins College, we, and we are a small liberal arts college in Orlando, Florida. And in addition to helping uh, business and economics students and faculty with the different research needs that they have, I was also a government librarian at the State Library of Florida in Tallahassee for five years. And so my background is both as uh, an academic and government librarian, and I'm bringing that dual perspective uh, to today's session. Uh, looks like we have a relatively small group. So if you have questions, I would love to hear from you. Uh, and we can try and answer some of those along the way as best we can. Uh, but what I'm going to go ahead and do next is uh, I've chosen a slightly unorthodox approach. Uh, rather than doing PowerPoints, I am pasting the LibGuide that I created for this session so that you will all have it as an artifact down the road. And uh, so we're going to walk through some of the sources in this guide and Whatever we don't get through today is going to be there for you later down the road. So the way I've structured this uh, webinar is in terms of first uh, potential entrepreneurs getting data about uh, the market, or in addition to that, uh, perhaps their local customer base or other uh, workforce statistics in the area. So getting data. Uh, and then getting assistance from the state data center or uh, data sources or the SBA, the Small Business Administration, and other sources like that to help them get off the ground. And then finally, once they've got a coherent strategy for where they want to take their business, 
then getting registered at some of the appropriate state and federal agencies. And uh, one of the things that I have learned, and I'll show you where to find uh, stuff for your own state uh, down the line. And what I've learned is um, when you're doing this kind of reference, if you can contact a local branch of your federal state or, or local agency, I highly recommend that. They're going to be more familiar with conditions on the ground than someone in Washington or your state capital may be in many cases. Um, the other thing is, I know this is a Godort webinar and we're talking about government agencies, but not everything that I'm going to talk about is strictly a government agency in the textbook uh, government information sense that you may have encountered in your library school days. Um, in Florida, for example, we have a lot of public-private partnerships. Um, Enterprise Florida is one of those that does that tries to attract large businesses to the state if they want to build a factory or something like that. And so there are a number of agencies that um, they aren't strictly government agencies, but honestly, your patrons aren't going to know the difference. And in my view, uh, it's best to just act like they are agencies in many ways, even though they're not because as far as your patrons are going to be concerned in many cases, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a government agency and they won't know the difference in many instances. And then um, most states have uh, some kind of agency that does different things. So there's usually a state agency that does business taxes. There's a state agency that does corporation uh, registering corporations, professional licensing. So, but the exact makeup of who houses those departments and where is going to vary depending on what your state is. And Godort actually has a state agency database wiki that will help you answer who those players are in your state. Uh, do we have any questions before we begin? It looks like All right. that is clear. Okay, fantastic. So. I'm gonna go ahead and and I'd like to just ask, since we've got a small group today, who is, um, how many of you work with entrepreneurs in your job and what kind of experiences have you had directing them to government resources? I'd love to hear from you. Oh yeah, grant writing is a big one for sure. Um, a bit outside the scope of what we're doing today. So if you're working with a venture capital capitalist or something like that, that's uh, gonna be a bit different, um, but this is gonna be more the general process. And then depending on how complex the need your entrepreneur has, if they have intellectual property needs, there are places for that. If there's venture capital, you may need to jump into some proprietary databases such as uh, PitchBook uh, or Crunchbase. But yeah, okay. Well, um, feel free to chime in anytime if I there's something you're unclear about. Uh, and okay, we've got one other person coming in. Oh, it says a couple of folks that says that chat is disabled. Uh, is that... Uh, Anything we can do anything for or or not? Yes, I have just chatted Kelly, who will hopefully be able to uh, resolve that here soon. Sounds good. Thank you. I'll go ahead and, and we'll just keep rolling and then I'll circle back and uh, address those things. So so in terms of getting uh, getting help, just getting data uh, off the ground, I'm starting with something that is not a government agency, which is ironic for a, a Godort webinar. But again, this is the Bureau of Business and Economic Research. Uh, they're out of the University of Florida. Uh, they produce the Florida official estimates of population that the state legislature uses to determine tax revenue and other things like that. So um, in many ways, they perform the function of a government agency. And in, in several other ways, they kind of do their own thing. 
and they're very different. And as far as because they interact so closely with the legislature, I am counting them as a government agency for today. So I'd like to go over just a couple of things that this uh, that this group does and how you might uh, and your state might have similar things. So they used to do very extensive uh, population and demographic data. Uh, they have had budget cuts over the years and in terms of not having as much information being as available as in the past. But I'll show you a couple things that I really like. Uh, they have something called the Florida Consumer Sentiment Index, which is based on a similar survey out of the University of Michigan. And you can find out here about the methodology that the survey uses. But um, what I like here is I've got a kitty cat here that is joining us for this webinar too. So she's going to, you know, come and go as she pleases, I suppose. Um, but in any event, um, if you actually look at this survey, one of the questions on here is, are you planning to make any uh, high volume or big ticket purchase items in the next month or so? And so if you're an entrepreneur looking at this, and let's say you're selling uh, washing machines or something like that, and you're 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 looking to time when you want to start up your particular uh, business. Well, if if you're in a downturn like we are now, you might think, oh, maybe I better wait till later. And uh, a lot of this information is available freely online, and it's very useful because it's getting that basic uh, consumer data. And uh, let's see, so that you can have. They have spreadsheets and they have, uh, let's see if we can even, uh, looks like mostly data files here. And I think that's what I looked at before. But anyway, know that this particular agency does this. Um, and along the same lines, uh, the other major thing they do is population studies. And let me show you one of their most famous. Let's see if we can find it here. Here we go, Florida estimates of population. So this is the most recent one. So this is a fairly arcane document. Does anyone have any ideas why an entrepreneur might be interested in a document that talks about population change and current population? How would that help them make business decisions? We have a comment in the chat, demographic, yeah. demand, growing neighborhood, best places to locate their business or start that business. More growth would be more contacts. That is that is exactly correct. Um, yes. And there's also a companion publication to this that is Florida population projections. And that is going to be, okay, well, you know, you're, it is the, you know, a small rural county in North Florida, is that going to grow somewhat? in 10 years and what is my business uh, going to look like in 10 years is the population growing or shrinking so you can get current and projected uh, within uh, these different kinds of documents and that's basically what this is is getting that that basic you know how are consumers doing right now and as well as that um what is the population going to be will there be enough people to buy the product that i'm selling so we've got a few other, yeah, folks are saying you want to also, yeah, employees is another thing uh, as well. And uh, we can talk about that in a minute. So yeah, so consumers is one thing and uh, having enough employees with the skills to do the, jo to do the job is going to be another one. Let's see, did I miss anything? Yeah, Census Business Builder is really good. BLS is also really good. Uh, Lori, I'm going to show something that's Florida specific that integrates BLS data, uh, just to give an example of some of that. So what I'll go ahead and do then is, do we have any other questions about 
looking at this kind of data before we continue. All right, great. So we'll uh, we'll go ahead and and keep moving. So I'd like to ask folks, I, I am sure most of you have heard of data.census.gov. And I'm also guessing that most of you are familiar with the, uh, certainly the decennial census, but I'd like to get a sense of what people know about the economic census, as well as the American Community Survey. Have you used either of, of these surveys in your reference with patrons? I do too, Larry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I've got it uh, in here. So I'm just uh, going back to our LibGuide here before we, okay, some folks use ACS more. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we've got a, um, a variety of knowledge uh, about these different products in here. So I'll just briefly talk about it for, um, there's of course the decennial census that's done every 10 years. Uh, you get very detailed, uh, uh, racial and ethnic data and, and age and, and many other things like gender every 10 years. Of course, the downside is that close to the end of the decade, that particular set of data is not as useful for business purposes as it was at the beginning of the decade. So uh, to counter that, we have the American Community Survey, which has a much smaller sample size but is designed for business, businesses and other stakeholders to use for decision making in between uh, in between census cycles. And there are one year, three year and five year estimates. Um, I'm not an expert on the methodology behind this survey, but they do ask some questions uh, such as education that are not present on the decennial census. And then in addition to that, you have the economic census, which surveys businesses and industries, and there's currently uh, that going on right now. And so all of that is lumped into data.census.gov, which I'll go ahead and go back to. Um, and the thing is, is that if an entrepreneur uses this, it's great, but essentially, what they get back is going right now it's pretty decent because it's 2022 and we just had the 2020 census but in five six years it's going to be a bit dicier and helping on knowing how about these different surveys and how the data are collected will help you somewhat in terms of giving entrepreneurs that most uh most reliable information so I'm gonna go ahead and give an example of, let's see if we can do this here. And of course you can do city and county. Let's do city of Orlando. And you have this very nice, I'll go ahead and turn off the, you've got this very nice, uh, profile here with all sorts of information and it's telling you the different tables and and everything and if you're an entrepreneur typing in Orlando you may have some difficulty sorting these different uh, things from each other and so having a librarian on hand uh, to talk about the different kinds of uh, data that goes into this is going to be very helpful because without your help an entrepreneur may or may not be able to distinguish between what sources of data are there and uh, what kind of, and how current it is and what to make of it. And some of your partners in the community will be able to help them with this as well if it gets very much in the 
data science weeds. But not all of the different uh, features apply to all products. So in, in, for example, industry codes and product codes are not collected on the ACS and the decennial census. Uh, so I'd like to demonstrate what those look like for those of us who are not familiar. Um, does anyone know, have folks used, I'm putting in the chat, NAICS codes? Does this ring a bell to anyone? And they're also called industry codes. Yeah, a few people have. Okay, awesome. Okay, yeah, so, you know, that's good. Uh, so I won't spend a ton of time on it, but just uh, I'll go ahead and go back to the, the data census uh, homepage. If you click on advanced search, if you're doing like codes, for example, this is the easiest way to do it. World will do industry codes. And I am in Orlando. So retail is a big deal for us here. It's huge, as you can probably imagine. And I personally, in most cases, like to go down to the five or six digit level, depending on what it is I'm selling or what it is that someone is selling. So let's do uh, clothing. Let's do jewelry. Yeah, we'll do that. So then you can get a, a sense of shoe stores at the national level, and then from there, narrow by geographies. So we'll go ahead and do Florida in this instance. Oh, I did Delaware by accent. I can't speak for Delaware. I'm sure they have great shoe stores there as well. So then you can find out more at the state and regional level and things like that. So essentially, you can either get in through geography, which is one way and probably the most common way your entrepreneurs are going to look, or you can use these more uh, faceted uh, filters uh, if they're looking for more specific information. So I know many of you have used data.census.gov, but I like to at least go over that so we're all on the same page. Let's see, I've got a question in the chat. Let's see. Laura has a question. It seems like it's always a trade-off between the level of detail and the geographic level on the NAICS level. Most first students want lots of detail on a small or very niche industry. You know, um, Laura, what I would do in that situation is I would actually triangulate it with different sources. So you could look at this um, and there's not, there's, there's not always going to be this granular level of detail that students want. So you might be able to use a product like Simply Map or Demographics Now to show uh, that uses census data and has some mapping features. Uh, and then you could look at, uh, industry reports from things like IBIS World, which have started to include some state and county level data. Uh, and so by triangulating different government and proprietary sources and saying, this is the best we can do, we can't subscribe to every database under the sun. And sometimes we have to go with the best of what we have. And that's how I would answer that question is, is sort of say, well, um, it's useful in, in conjunction with other sources. Does that answer your question?
Yes, you're quite welcome. Uh, let's see how we're doing on time. Um, all right, any, any questions about data.census.gov and using these? All right, well, we will uh, we'll go ahead. Oh, excuse me. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yep, you're coming through loud and clear. Okay, I got a call that went into my headset. Anyway, all right, we're good. So let's go on. Let's keep moving. Uh, so someone mentioned the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That is, of course, uh, the major labor uh, data statistics agency at the federal level. But there are state labor offices uh, at the state level as well in most states. And uh, in our case in Florida, we have the Department of Economic Opportunity. And this is one of those weird agencies that was once the Florida Department of Labor and does uh, unemployment, uh, unemployment assistance and things like that. But they also do a bunch of economic development stuff and various uh, administrations have tried to reinvent what it is they do and moving away from helping people uh, with labor claims and things like that and uh, doing things more along the lines of, well, how can we help businesses find labor? So sort of pivoting in that way. So they're this weird hybrid agency that doesn't exactly know what it wants to be and has this very convoluted agency, uh, convoluted history. And this is one of the things you find in uh, Florida state agencies quite a bit because of the way politics have evolved over the last 20 years. So uh, BLS is great and I've certainly included that, but if you're in a, your, your particular state, it might be more useful to look at what's going on there. And so in this case, the Department of Economic Opportunity has included a portal uh, that has links to different uh, BLS surveys that folks can look at. And uh, so there's quite a bit there. Um, and so this is a very complicated, uh, it's, it's complicated in terms of the, the, the technology, but if we click on the occupational employment and wage statistics, for example, it will link to some Florida data and we'll hope that happens because it, it can be a little wonky. So you can actually do visualizations as well as looking at more granular data. And I'm looking at, Okay, this is Tampa, for example. So you can really uh, delve into this quite a bit and uh, look at different facets uh, for wages and also look at annual wages. And so they've done, you know, I, I have to give them credit, has not always been this good, but they've done a nice job in making this visualizable. And I think that is uh, partially due to pre uh, pressure from the business community here in Florida to have useful and accessible data by folks with not a lot of data literacy necessarily. And uh, someone mentioned in terms of employment statistics, uh, this particular agency is very useful in terms of, you know, helping employers figuring out, okay, I'd like to start a law firm in Tampa. Do I have enough people with the right skill set uh, to do that? And so, this kind of portal at your state level is going to help you do that, depending on how well it's executed. And um, it, and if you're really looking to do business, especially within a state, it can be more useful at times than looking at all the national data from BLS and trying to sort through all that to a Florida context or wherever your state is. So just know that it's pretty likely that your state labor agency is going to have specialized state specific information like this and you and your entrepreneur patrons can use it as such. So that concludes the 
getting background data part of our presentation. Do we have any questions before we move on? All right, looks like we're uh, going to go ahead and continue. Um, I'd like to ask, I'm going to show the S, the Small Business Administration SBA. I'd like to get a sense from everybody. How familiar are you with the SBA and SCORE and the uh, Small Business Development Center Network, SBDC? What, what do you, how much do you all know about that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Lori is, is familiar with the great different different levels of familiarity. All right, so we've got a mix. I'll just, I'll, I'll, um, I'll stick with the essentials then. Um, for those of you who may not be all that familiar with it, the Small Business Administration is a cabinet level federal agency charged with promoting small business in this country. And uh, the important thing to know about them is that they do not do everything on their own. They don't assume every function themselves, but rather uh, they have nonprofit partners that they contract with. And the main ones are SBDC and SCORE. And so actually uh, to really get your patrons the help they, you need, they need, uh, you will have to refer them to the right, uh, their SBA office or a partner a partner agency or nonprofit, uh, if that doesn't, uh, if that isn't going to meet their needs. So, like, to give you an example, the SBA specializes in business loans, and its partners do not. So, if you send someone to the S the SBA uh, or, or to Score, for example, for loans, they won't be able to help them. They'll just redirect them to the SBA. So, uh. Especially for business loans, the SBA is where you're going to want to go for that. And then what I'd like to do then is talk about the SBDC network. And this is going to be more along the lines of your, you know, after your entrepreneurs have done some data research based on what we just talked about, um, they can go to the SBDC and say, hey, I've got some basic idea about what I want to do and what my market is, but can you help me with execution? Can you help me with planning? Can you help me with some of the specifics that I might need to actually bring this business to fruition? And that's what they specialize in. And so there is a whole network of these SBDCs, SBDCs all over the country and this is an excellent place to send your patrons to for that technical assistance. Now, on the other hand, um, if you are looking for, uh, if your patrons are looking for mentoring and things like that, there is a nonprofit called SCORE that has offices again all over the country. And they focus more on that mentoring and their ex-executives and, and experienced entrepreneurs that really do that piece of it. So knowing these basic things about what the SBA does and what its partners do is going to help you uh, send your patrons to the right place when they need it. Uh, now, the good thing about this is on the SBA homepage, you don't necessarily, beyond knowing what I just said, it's ultimately going to be these uh, these other agencies' uh, responsibility to give them this kind of assistance. So as I will say uh, in other places, I really love uh, this, you know, getting that local assistance, getting that local business on the ground is really going to help you out. So I'm going to do our... Winter Park, Florida zip code, which is where 
uh, I am based out of at Rollins College, and we'll see if this pulls up for us. And it's kind of nice because it tells them where the district office is for some of those loans and other technical assistance, uh, the Small Business Development Center at the University of Central Florida in this case, and then the SCORE office. And so there, there are other uh, programs that the SBA coordinates. They have some programs for women, uh, ethnic minorities, and also veterans. Uh, and those are all great, but I wanted to focus on the big ones. And just know that if you go on the SBA website and you have a basic understanding of what these agencies do, and you put in the zip code, it will tell them the different places they can go. And that's basically using the SBA. Um, as you can imagine, in this case, a lot of it is, is referral as opposed to in-depth reference and just sending people to the right place. Does anyone have any questions about that piece of it? All right, well, we're going to keep rolling. OK, I see a one person's question. Oh. All right, sounds good. All right, well, let's keep rolling, guys. I do want to talk about one other thing that is super awesome. Um, this is the State Data Center Program. Um, does anyone know about this, the Census State Data Pro Center Program? Does it ring a bell? This is amazing. I love, okay, a couple, let's see. Yeah, okay. This is really like, even to librarians, it, it is very, uh, very much a well-kept secret. Uh, these are folks who can help your patrons with that re those really intensive data needs. Um, libraries are often one of them. We are a local affiliate for Florida uh, at Rollins College. Um, but it's a network, it's in all 50 states as well as the territories. And it's gonna help, you know, if you if exhausted your ability to uh, help someone with data needs for startup purposes, there is a member network. Let's see. Let's, uh, I'm gonna show Florida as an example and To briefly give you an example, um, each state has a lead agency. Uh, and in this case, it's the Florida Office of Economic and Demographic Research, which does some of the population and revenue projections that I discussed earlier. Or actually, they take that data and then feed it to the legislature, essentially. And that particular agency uh, is, the, is the liaison with the Census Bureau for this program. And the reason I know about this program is um, because I used to work at the State Library of Florida in Tallahassee and they're a coordinating agency. And that particular library, in addition to the databases they have, has a lot of historic population maps and uh, archival census data, things of that nature. And that's why, and they're sort of back up to the, the, the lead agency for the state. And then you have a series of affiliate agencies, and that can be anything from chambers of commerce to um, yeah, chambers of commerce, libraries, economic development agencies. It can really be a grab bag uh, of different kinds of agencies. And um, and so I often we are a, a member we are a member of this, but. Like if someone had detailed labor questions, I might send them to the Department of Economic Opportunity, who I just shared with you uh, for labor questions. So it's a great resource. I did a presentation on it at ALA 2016. I'm a big fan of it. I hope you'll be big fans of it too by the end of this presentation. 
So with that, and this is the State Library of Florida, the coordinating agency, Rollins College, Olin Library, where I work, we're part of the network as well. And then just briefly before we wrap things up, uh, there is also a labor market information network uh, that is run by the BLS, and it's going to list, list the different agencies that really specialize in labor market inf information. So in the case of Florida, it's going to be the Florida DEO that we looked at earlier. And uh, this is a great list if you have someone who has really detailed workforce or, or, or employment needs to send them to one of these agencies and they can help uh, them meet that particular need. And then we've got a few minutes left. So the last thing I'd like to talk about is, okay, so what are some of the agencies that register uh, that register businesses. Once we've gotten all this assistance and all this help, what do we do next? Well, all states are gonna have some kind of uh, agency that incorporates businesses. So in our case in Florida, it's the Division of Corporations and you can actually uh, look for different, uh, they have the incorporation records, there's limit, they do different kinds of companies like limited liability companies, uh, uh, regular corporations, also known as Inc., you may have seen, limited liability partnerships, um, and their main function is that if something happens, someone, there needs to be an entity in existence for, to be sued, so that you can't just conduct business and then not be able to be sued if you are putting out that, a, a bad or unsafe product, for example. So you can search records in these, but um, you know Florida's been around a while, um, so it can be a little dicey. But there's a lot here beyond the scope of this presentation. But I'll go ahead and put in. Let's see. Just to give you an idea of the complexity of this, we have a grocery store here in Florida in the southeast called Publix. It's a big player regionally. And you would think that would be pretty easy, but in fact, everything that's ever been public, Publix, every spin-off company, everything uh, is going to be uh, in there and it's going to be very challenging to find. So if we try Publix supermarkets, we might have better luck. So here is the official Publix supermarkets entry. And you can find out, uh, you know, who the registered agent is and some of the officers. And so this can be very handy. It's also a good way to make sure that no one is using your uh, your existing name. Oh, someone, uh, Ryan says we have them in Tennessee. Yep, they've made it up there. Uh, they've really been expanding with a vengeance. So, so know that um, if your entrepreneur is registering with uh, their your corporation's agency, which is often the Secretary of State's office, um, it's going. You know, they they will have to do some legwork to make sure they don't take a name that already exists. And then here, and and then the, another major function of state uh, of government is business taxes. And so, certainly in all fifty states and territories, you're going to have. Um, federal taxes that apply to some degree. Uh, you'll often have uh, patrons uh, ask about an EIN or employee ID number. This is similar to, this is a social security number, but for a business essentially. And you know this is well beyond most of what we can do. In fact, it's veering into uh, legal legal advice, which we have to be very careful about as librarians. And uh, on the IRS's homepage and in the lib guide I provided, you can find you can help your patrons find their local taxpayer office because I have found in experience it's almost impossible to get a hold of the IRS over the phone, and it's better to just call directly. Uh, Larry, thanks for that. I appreciate that. Um, 
uh, let's see. And then just along the same lines, you're probably going to have a state business tax receipt uh, as well. And so in our case in Florida, the Department of Revenue is in charge of that. And it can be kind of wonky to deal with them as well. Their website is not great. Uh, so if your state has some kind of local office, they can call as uh, Florida DOR does. Uh, I recommend that as well. And then just uh, also to make things even more complex, um, at this at the county level, there's often a requirement for a business tax receipt, which is a sales tax essentially. And um, often at the city level as well. So if you're in a state that has townships or parishes or something like that, I'd advise folk, I'd advise you to tell patrons, okay, check out uh, some of these city taxes, you know, make sure your city doesn't have a requirement, uh, make sure your county or parish doesn't have a requirement. And then also you might have an instance where a patron is operating in an unincorporated county, in which case, let's say I used to take my cat to this very rural uh, boarding kennel that was outside of the city limits of Tallahassee. And so they might have needed to have a Leon County tax receipt, and they're in North Florida, but you may not have needed, they may not have needed a Tallahassee, uh, City of Tallahassee uh, business tax license because they're not operating it within city limits. So there's a lot of nuances to it. So check your state uh, situation and, and see what applies in your case. Um, the last thing I'd like to talk about before we wrap up and go to questions is just professional licensing. Um, it's really going to depend on what your uh, your different what what your business is, what your patron is trying to do, but a wide variety of different businesses require some kind of professional licensing. So in this case, in Florida, everything from geologists and engineers to barbers and auctioneers and mold remediators require some kind of license. There are also plenty of licenses, plenty of plenty of businesses that don't have a state level license that you might think, well, why is there not a state level license for this? That's very odd. Um, why is there, you know, there's not always a, a correlation. But in general, if you think about that particular uh, business and say to yourself, well, is there a risk of harm or fraud or something like that's very significant? So in Florida, librarians are not licensed at the state level, for example. Um, you know, we could, I could certainly lie my face off to somebody. Um, I could certainly do any number of unethical things, but ultimately, um, you know, and that would be very damaging and bad, but it's not this on the same scale as, uh, you know, a, a realtor lying about the state of a house or a mold remediator doing shoddy work. And so it tends to be a correlation. The more money on the line, the more likely there is to be professional licensing in my experience. And there are different agencies that do it. Um, the Department of Business and Professional Regulation is a big one. Um, and then at the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services is again, one of those grab bag agencies that's part consumer protection, part promoting state agriculture and aquaculture. And they have things like gyms and dance studios and things of that nature. Well, actually not dance studios anymore, but it's really just check out your different agencies that do licensing in your state um, and get a sense of that. And if you're doing, and but not all industries need it. So that's the one thing to, uh, to keep in mind is, um, but it's a common requirement, and so I'm covering it because even if you're dealing with a high-level venture capitalist or you know the next Elon Musk, there still may be professional licensing required, but there may not be. And then if you want to know what is going on in your state and who the agencies are, uh, there is the Godort State Agencies Project, 
state agency databases project. And this is where I send people if they have a question about, you know, the regulatory makeup and the ecosystem of entrepreneur licensing, regulation, assistance in their state. And it's fantastic. And I it has saved my bacon a number of times. So that is how you would find out who the players are in your state. Uh, and with that, that is the end of the formal part of the presentation. And the floor is now open for questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Blake. I know I've uh, already learned a lot uh, to support our entrepreneurship students here at UCCS. Um, as I mentioned, if you have questions, please either use the Q&A or drop those in the chat. I will be monitoring both. Um, and while we wait for those to come in, I'll kick us off with a question of my own, which is, what are your tips for finding those sort of non-governmental, semi-governmental agencies that you were talking about kind of towards the beginning on Google? Like, are there keywords that you recommend using, that kind of a thing? Uh, yes, I would say public-private partnership is a big one. That and, right. and I I can't speak for every state, but yeah. So that would be, uh, that would be that would be a big one. So depending on, essentially, like you know, depending on the, depending on the political party of your executive and legislative branch in your state over the past thirty years or so, you are going to see. A, a situation in more blue leaning states, you might see more actual government departments that, you know, where it's the Department of Labor, the Department of Tourism, whatever it might be, um, versus uh, in, in a very red state like uh, Florida, you might see more of the public private partnership, you might see more of this hodgepodge. So think about, you know, the make, you know, how, how your state has tracked over the past 20 years. Um, and and that will give you some guidance in terms of how much of that digging you will need to do. Um, there might all you might also see like there are certain industries where it's kind of a mix, like in tourism promotion, for example, we have a public-private partnership for that. I know that some states have a tourism board, which is not the same as an agency and some other states have an agency. So there are certain industries uh, or certain segments such as business and tourism that are going to have more of that versus something like, like you know, social services, for example. That's my experience anyway. Does awesome. that answer your question? Yeah, it really does. And I, I appreciate the way that you've drawn throughout this webinar, the sort of full life cycle of of where you'll need to go for kind of each step in this process and how it tracks really long term. Um, and as I said, folks, if you have questions, the chat is open, the Q&A is open, although I know we have had a pretty lively discussion throughout the presentation with all of those great opportunities for audience participation. I just put my email in the chat. Um, it's also on the LibGuide uh, as well that I shared with you. And really, that thing is intended to be a living document that will be there for your reference forever. And, um, you know, just uh, feel free to reach out if you have questions, and I'll do my best to, you know, after the webinar, and I'll be happy to answer that. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, not seeing any, I, I'm going to go ahead and offer one last thank you to our presenter. Thank you so much, Blake, for taking us through this whole process. And thank you all for joining us here today. Um, remember to stay tuned for info on registering for our December webinar. And we'll look forward to seeing you again in the future.